Hi everybody, Krister and Maisie, and we're in Cambridge, and it is November twelfth, and this is our update for the month of November. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been about a month since we gave our last update. Since then, I believe I came back from Egypt in that time, got to teach in a BCC, and teach on the Book of Exodus in Egypt, which was a phenomenal experience. Mm -hmm. Got to see the um, National Egyptian Museum in Cairo, which has a ton of artifacts. In fact, so many artifacts that they don't even have them all labeled uh, because they have too many things in there, mm -hmm. which is so wild. Um, other than that, I've been preparing for teaching. I teach uh, Ecclesiastes here in just over two weeks, and then I'm doing the Gospel of John at the beginning of uh, January, and so I'll be preparing for that. But uh, the Lord's been just doing a lot in my own heart these past few weeks, just showing me and teaching me a lot. I've been working through the Gospel of John, uh, translating it uh, from Greek into English. And one of the things the Lord has just been uh, really pressing on my heart this past week has been out of the Gospel, or out of John chapter 6, uh, where Jesus feeds the 5,000. And when Jesus feeds the 5,000, like, he, they weren't, the people didn't come expecting to get fed. And the disciples didn't expect to feed them. But Jesus knew what he was going to do. It says that in uh, verse 3 of the chapter, I believe. And uh, Jesus knew that he was going to feed the people. And just the thing that really struck me about it is that Jesus lets the people eat until they're content. And the people eat their fill. Uh, and one of the words that Jesus, is, Jesus use in, uses in telling his disciples to uh, feed the people is to treat them as dinner guests. And Jesus just feeds them until they're full, like you would with a dinner guest. And uh, what challenged me in that really, and should challenge all of us, is are we willing to be as generous as Jesus was with those people? Are we willing to feed them until they're full? Are we willing to be uh, generous until uh, we, until the people we're generous with have all their needs fulfilled? And it's super challenging for me. Uh, I... Uh, just as a, a short story, I, I went and bought Miji a, a, a heated blanket, an electric blanket, the other day, yesterday, and came back with one and hadn't opened it and looked at it and pulled it out and realized I had bought an absolutely terrible blanket. And I was like, this thing is bad. Like, I need to just, I need to take it back right away. And I took it back and exchanged it and knew that I had to get something that was just like better, something that was nice, not something that was like, oh, it's it's inexpensive and it'll get the job done, um, but actually something that's nice. And mm -hmm. it's that connecting piece with those stories of, are we generous with our things? Are we um, willing to give our, our of ourselves? So, yeah, that's what the Lord's uh, really been doing with me and what I've been up to, but I'll let Miji share what's been going on with her. Yeah, um... Yeah, so I was so blessed by the blanket because I've been wanting to have that since uh, the weather here is getting really cold. Um, so it's been a while, and I yeah, yeah, yeah I was so blessed. And um, thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, we just finished the book of Samuel, one and first and second, this week. And one thing that really stood out to me was the difference between Saul and David. And both of them, you know. Uh, did a lot of mistakes and they uh, kind of messed up actually before the Lord. But why God called David the man after uh, his own heart is because uh, the clear difference between them is fear of man and fear of the Lord. The soul feared the man and then he just um, cared uh, more what people think and he disobeyed, disobeyed the Lord. And David feared the Lord and he just followed him, he obeyed him no matter what. And so that was a huge difference between them. And God defined like David. He mm. is a man after my own heart. He knows what I want. He, he, he knows um, yeah, what I think. And so I, that really st st struck um, to me. And so that I really want to um, yeah, fear God and not fear people. And so that can be yeah, like my desire as I was studying this week. And so uh, it can also challenge you guys. Like, yeah, to really fear Lord, but not to fear man, um, not to listen people's voice over God's voice, 
and try uh, all your heart to obey the Lord. And so, yeah, that was something that I, you know, God's been speaking to me this week. Mm-hmm. Other, so many other things, but that's something that I want to share. Yeah. And so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. Thanks, babe. Yes. And uh, just as some other stuff that's been going on at the base, uh, another guy was led to the Lord on mm-hmm. uh, Tuesday, yes. and or on a Saturday. Saturday. There was a guy on Saturday, yeah, and then there was yesterday. a girl on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, and By the team, yeah, yeah, a couple people yeah. just receiving the Lord and getting connected with discipleship and with the church mm-hmm. in the local area. So yeah. it's just awesome to see how God is moving in Cambridge. That mm-hmm. um, the Lord is on the move. Yes. It's really exciting. Uh, beyond that, as well, we've been having a great time discipling the students here and working with them, uh, helping them. Uh, in their study of the Bible, as well as growing all together. We have a weekly processing time at the end of each book, or each uh, the books that we do that week. And they've all just been uh, so wonderful to see how the Bible is discipling people, and that we get to have a part in that, and it's such a joy mm-hmm. together. So uh, thank you all for your prayers mm-hmm. and for your support, yes. and uh, we're so blessed by each and every one of you. So thank you so much. And uh, keep an eye out for another update soon. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.